Yes, it is going to be a huge game, isn't it, as Tottenham play again. And what a terrible, terrible week it has been for Tottenham. Doesn't it feel a long time ago? Do you remember the, the autumn when everybody was talking about Tottenham and they played 10, they'd won 8, they drew 2, they were unbeaten. James Madison was the best player in the league. Hunmin Son was the best finisher since Marco Van Basten, uh, Marco Van Basten and Ange Postacoglu was turning water into wine. Two wins in their past seven games. They have now conceded nine goals in three games and Ange Postacoglu Mr. Koglu is getting it so wrong. He says that he isn't too fussed about set pieces. He doesn't think he needs a set piece coach. But from everything that we have seen from Tottenham of late, they desperately need some help in that region. They are conceding goals galore. And Arsenal scored an awful lot of goals from set pieces against them. Chelsea scored both goals from set pieces against them. And it is going from bad to worse for Tottenham. I think their hopes of qualifying for the Champions League are head, uh, hanging by a thread. And... I genuinely believe that Ange Postacoglu is getting a really easy ride of it. I don't understand why we don't explore Ange Postacoglu losing his job. Why is Ange Postacoglu not held to the same regard as other managers? When you think about the pressure that Graham Potter was put under when he was at Chelsea, and you compare that to the pressure that Ange Postacoglu is put under, it feels like he gets a really favourable ride. And ultimately, let's remember that all Ange Postacoglu has done is take Tottenham from what? 8th to 5th. So it's going to be a very interesting game and obviously there's an awful lot to be said about Liverpool as well. I mean, Jurgen Klopp, his farewell tour needs a win. Mohamed Salah versus Jurgen Klopp was very interesting, wasn't it, the other day? I believe that will now be water under the bridge. But this fixture is so interesting because if Tottenham do not win, their hopes of qualifying for the Champions League are all but over and I cannot see anything other than a Liverpool win. It's also... Chelsea versus West Ham and I think that is going to be a huge game because I know a lot of people are going to find this fairly uninspiring and suggest that uh, this is an example of how the mighty have fallen but I am desperate for Chelsea to make it into Europe on any definition of Europe whether it's the Conference League and I'm dreaming of the Europa League I desperately want Chelsea to be playing European football next season and if we beat West Ham United if we can get a positive result against West Ham United I think that we can qualify for Europe and it would be wonderful to be back into it. Not necessarily because of what it means for the club. It isn't prestigious or, or an, and it's certainly not what the club need in the eyes of Todd Bowley and Clear Lake. But I love European football and some of the best memories that I've ever had in football stadiums come in the Europa League. So I am desperate for Chelsea to get there. Fingers crossed we can do it. And it's also... Brighton versus Aston Villa, a huge game for Aston Villa off the back of playing in European football. I think that out one has a draw written all over it. It is so difficult to uh, to win games off the back of playing in Europe. So that could slightly open the door. The door could be ajar for Tottenham to make a run for that Champions League. That was a look ahead to tomorrow's Premier League action. Don't forget that with now you can stream all Sky Sports action like Liverpool versus Tottenham live tomorrow, contract free with a now membership. Search now sports. Stay ahead of the game on TalkSport with Now. Stream all the Sky Sports action like Liverpool versus Tottenham. Live tomorrow, contract free with a Now Sports membership. Search Now Sports, 18 plus, stream via internet, terms apply. Right, let's get back to your calls. Gary, a Manchester City fan. You were at the game today, Gary. How was it? Yeah, I, th- I thought we played absolutely superb today. We, 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 see, we seem like we're on it. So like the way we moved the ball, it was quick, it was... We look like we're up. For, we're up for it. We're up for the for the title running, and I just I can't see us dropping any points. Do you not think so? When you look at the fixtures now, do you, do you feel like the double is almost more likely than less likely? Well, the FA Cup's done in it. I mean, we'll beat United. That's that's a given. But I think just the way we played today, the the way the energy, the way we move the ball, I, we're in that zone, and I, it doesn't to me it doesn't matter what Arsenal do now. Mm. Erling, Erling Haaland was unreal, wasn't he? Did you listen to this. This is going to blow your mind, Gary. You ready for this? Go on. Nine hat tricks, 61 Premier League goals in 59 starts, 35 goals this season, 88 goals in 94 appearances, all told. Nine hat tricks for Manchester City and 61 Premier League goals in 59 starts. Should Erling Haaland have at least been in the reckoning for Player of the Year? Yeah, it's a tough one because I think, like, obviously, Bolden being an English player, we have, we have, we look, we love the golden child, an English player, we do love that, and he's, he's Bolden's been superb. But yeah, I think, I think Bolden deserves. It. I don't think Erling deserves Player of the Year. No, I don't. Mm. I think his goals are superb. He's, 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 he's been brought in to score goals, which is what he does. And like Roy Keane, Roy Keane says things about his touch. He's a, he's a League Two player. 
He's not brought in to do that. He's yeah. brought in to score goals. That comment he's, he's now. No that, number nine. That's yeah. it. That comment about uh, being a League Two player, it feels slightly cartoonish now, doesn't it? Uh, it's, it's, it's pathetic. It's childish, really. Yeah. That's what it is. It's childish. Yeah. But, Are you worried at all? In, in terms of... I, just, I just feel like over the last couple of years, we've had that much bad publicity about what's going on. And I don't think we get recognition of how good we are. We are that good. I mean, like Real Madrid, when Arsenal, Arsenal comes to our ground, they put 11 men behind the ball, head to the box. Real Madrid comes to our place. Real Madrid at a home put 11 men behind the ball. That is how good we are. After that 5-1 win over Wolves, Manchester City boss Pep Guardiola explained his altercation with full goal striker Erling Haaland. No, sometimes in long balls, he, he already went the position, you know, the defender and they pull him, they pull him, it's never fall, never fall, he's a little bit frustrated, it's never, never his fault and I can understand this, it's relax and, you know, sometimes the ball is uncertain, it's level on the shoulders, I can understand, we can understand, but when the position, they pull it, they, they try to make him really uncomfortable. Imagine the situation, he was sent on defender, they do what the opponents do to him, is always 10 to 10 is fault, it's 10 to 10. You know, long ball, central defender guy, he push him, pull him like he's been pulled, it's fault. And sometimes it's, it's average, so it's not not much. And that's why sometimes it's a bit uh, frustrated. But don't worry, he was not grumpy with me. Don't worry. <laughs> not shy of falling out with his players, is he? I think um, it's, it's it's an interesting one, the way he does that. No, yeah, I, I think that's just his management. I, I, I think he just expects that much out of everybody. So it's, I think... I think from the public point of view, they'll, they'll listen to that and I, I think they'll think more of it. But as a player, if you're in his player every day, you're in his management, I think that's just the way he is day-to-day management. I think he'll be like that on a, on a training pitch. Mm, amazing. Gary, any uh, any trepidation now? You know, when you're looking at your fixtures, three games left to play, you've never won at the new Tottenham Hotspur ground apart from in the FA Cup, but in the league, you are still winless there. Can you see them tripping you up? It's going to be tough. I think, I think it all goes down to if, if Tottenham have got something to play for, I think if Tottenham have got something to play for for the top four, then I think it could be. But I, I, I full of full of the way, full of the ways is it's not easy because full of can be hot and cold. It, they're, they're, on they the day, they're Arsenal, didn't they? Yeah, they're, they're, they're very on the day. They're a very good team. Mm. But I think I think it does go down to the Spurs game. But I think it depends if Spurs are still in, in a chance for getting top four. If they're not. If they're not, then you should, you should, I, you should I, I smash them. I think might take the pedal a little bit. But. Yeah. I think, I think you'll be fine. I think you'll be fine, Gary. Thank you very much for your call there. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app, and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.